Sup gang, I'm Kosal. A few months ago, me and my friends started a new D&D campaign. It didn't go so well. In the last episode, our party ran into a spooky ghost town and are probably about to die from a wrafe. They also discovered that the justice system in the 1880s is surprisingly not for equality. So, for obvious reasons, Crawley takes a backseat this session. Welcome to part 2 of the prologue to my campaign, The Gambler's Frontier. The decrepit Crystal River Hotel begins to shake violently. Dust and debris scatter, fogging the vision of those attempting to observe their surroundings. A stern but calm man simply looks down the hallway at the location of the ghastly scream. A whimpering and meek individual cowers at the source of the terror. All right, innkeeper, what the hell was that? We should go check on her. Is that woman okay? You're, you, you guys are the only people staying here. Then what the hell? just shrieked like a banshee i don't know all right well, i guess i'm taking the lead ah desantis uh where is the innkeeper right behind me ah uh, carl okay. carl is it how long has it been since your wife died i don't know a few years maybe what why what does she have to do with this was there any complications when she died <laughs> xander can you can you ask him about what you saw xander Xander, stop, stop texting that milf, you cuck. You yep. look at that. It's <laughs> so worth it, though. It's so worth it. I don't care. Carl, I think it's your wife that's that's having this issue. Which room was it that she died in? She died in our, in our bedroom. Can you lead the way to there, please? Uh, I can't. I can't lead it. I, I walk up and put my hand on her shoulder. I I believe in you, Carl. You've, you're a strong man, and your wife would, would think that you're strong enough to face this as well. We will be here with you. Goes out. He slaps his face. <sighs> Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Lead the way, Carl. Carl. I want to use my small stature and run into the room. All right, I'm pulling out my sword and the light shines in the ghoul's face. And as you shine up this light, you see this horrible, this woman seems like her hair is kind of torn out at the seams, you know? The, her, her skin just looks like it's melting and uh, she looks pregnant. Carl, did, did you kill your pregnant wife? No, I didn't kill my pregnant wife. Please, she's still grabbing my arm. <laughs> Carl, why, why is she grabbing you, Carl? Carl, my love, why have you brought these strangers here? Oh God, oh God, there she is. Carl, did your wife die during childbirth? During childbirth? No, she didn't die during childbirth. How did she die, Carl? It happened a long time ago. She just sat at home. She forced me to work, to just keep working. And I couldn't take it anymore. Did you kill her? Carl. What exactly are you trying Carl, to tell us? Carl, did you did you have sex without protection? I did! <laughs> oh god. Oh. Why don't you do a voice like this? Come on. I'm Zonda. Hello! Your name is Zonda! I'm here to clean your chimney! <laughs> Master Tumnus isn't going to be happy about this. Did you push her, Carl? No, I didn't push her. She tripped on our baby. Uh, Carl, do you know where they perhaps are buried? Yeah, out back, right next to the old hickory tree. I'll be right back. Um, Desantis, uh, Xander, can you, uh, perhaps keep him safe? I'm going to sprint out the door. As you run out of the door at the far end of the hallway where you just came from, you see a little small figure dart across from the other rooms. It's scurrying, you know, like... And it scurries over. Fuck. Roll an attack with that. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Xander, as you pull up your revolver, but then he accidentally lets off a shot and then it shoots Carl in the shoulder. Oh god! <laughs> as you run out this door you open it suddenly a small little creature jumps on to your head uh down down little one i'm trying to save you you see it like pulling at your hair but it's a baby so it has baby strength i just i just keep running out the door while it's doing this uh shot Layla, if, if you'll uh come help me real quick oh god what the fuck is that in your hair wraith infestation is very common a wraith um do you see a hick uh is it the hickory tree over there Ah, Shaw, can you grab that shovel over there and, um, perhaps dig real quick? Yeah, no problem. And, uh, as you, as you take a closer look at the cross, you know, you see two names on it. You see, uh, Katie and Geodude. Ah, Geodude, that's your name, isn't it? Geodude. 
I actually, I pull him out of the hair and start rocking back and forth as Shaw's digging. A little dirty. Shut the fuck up. I'm glad, nigga. And as you see this baby fully, you know, it's disgusting. This baby looks gross. It's skin purplish and veiny. Hey, Cecil. Thing's almost dug. Seems like there's a coffin under here. Ah, perfect. Um, let's pry that open real quick. All right. Well, I'm not much of a religious folk, but something tells me this is not. This is a little sacrilegious. Uh, no, I, I think what has happened is that the, the baby never got to have his birth baptism and the, the child was born out of wedlock. Feels like we're taking this from another thing. Does it sound familiar? I think I heard this story somewhere. Oh, the Witcher book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the Witcher book. Witch. Yeah, I remember the, that one. The Witcher. And he, uh, he props it open and inside you see this, uh, a, a skeleton and, uh, what appears to be a small little bundle, a white bundle in the skeleton's hand. Layla, will you, will you hold him for a second? And I hand her over the Wraith baby. Since you're since you're down, you're you're short. She kind of like layers her down with her book without touching it. Presses down on the back, pressing it into the ground without touching it. Alayla, be a little bit gentler. It is a baby. And I, I pull open the Bible and I start going to a, a verse about redemption and stuff like that. As I read it, dowsing the bodies in oil. But how's the baby responding to this? To me reading out these biblical verses getting quieter and then once it's thoroughly doused i'm gonna cast firebolt on the bodies and i hope y'all pass on you see this fireball come from cecil's hand and it starts to burn these bodies inside of the thing and the baby on the ground is getting quieter and quieter it's okay young one i i know you were taken before your time but you and your mother can pass on together suddenly it pushes off the book and it jumps immediately towards cecil's face i kick it in the fire <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. You spooked me. <laughs> and then from inside the house, you hear a blood curdling scream. <laughs> Back to Xander and DeSantis. <laughs> My baby. <laughs> Geo, dude! Katie, you can see. Dude. You don't know her name. What are you doing? Yeah, you don't know her name. Or what's her name? <laughs> I'm shot! Oh, God! <laughs> I'm in oh. so much pain! Uh oh, if you I, don't uh... tell me this right now, then you'll be in no pain very quickly. This is the 1890s, and there's like a 90% chance of me dying. You're supposed to pass on, Katie. I did all that work for you, baby. I worked at Wild Western Smarget for you for so long. There's no passing on for me you and i are gonna be together forever carl you know what mama wants and mama's gonna get it oh gosh that was one not... more... <laughs> i get one more night with my baby carl and i let him free forever no please please just kill me now just kill me i slap him across the face i don't want to hear anything from you right now carl oh, you're gonna have to do this no words out of your mouth you're just gonna nod and you're gonna make your wife pass on. This feels like a crime. <laughs> Shaw, Layla, and uh, Cecil make it in time to see this happen, uh, except all they see now is Xander and DeSantis around uh, Carl, who has a gunshot wound and his pants are down. What the hell are you doing to that poor man? Carl, you should put your pants back on. Wraith went a little unhinged there, but Wraith we took care of it. As you as you take a look at the the room around you, the room around you, you know, before it's dusty, very decrepit, very old, starts to get a little bit more newer looking, you know, very cleaner looking, and even even Carl himself starts to look a little bit more upbeat. Carl, can you uh, please put some pants on? You're getting hard. Oh yeah, I got you. Carl, do you know anything about a, a Samantha we met next door? Samantha? Who's Samantha? Oh my yes. God! Sam. Oh Sam. God! I gotta get out of this town. Listen, you guys. <laughs> If you want anything, I gotta go. I think it's time for me to leave this town forever. You, if you're leaving the town, you perhaps put the N in our name? Yeah, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. It's in the safe. It's in the safe in the back. 2 18 54. Xander DeSantis, let's, let's patch him up. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of canned sardines in your closet. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. You guys ever, you, ever, you guys ever heard of Dogecoin? Kyle, I think you should leave town. Well, you're at the end of the video. Now you may be wondering, what happened to Crawley? Well, we actually played another hour and a half longer after all this took place. But, because that would add another 10 minutes to the video and 
Honestly, I just don't feel like editing that, and I'm about a year late on my backlog of videos to edit. I'll just summarize it here. Basically, the gang goes to the jail where Crawley is sent. He tries to escape, but very easily fails. Then the party tries to convince the corrupt sheriff to let him go. This obviously goes poorly. So poorly, in fact, that Xander tries to threaten him at gunpoint, which the corrupt sheriff and his cronies manage to easily apprehend him. Which, uh, looking back, I probably should have killed him here, but oh well. So Cecil now has to convince everyone to let everyone go by offering to buff and create new weapons for them because he's an artificer. And they also end up losing the thousand dollars that they just got from Carl for saving him. But right before leaving, the sheriff decides to send one of his best men to show the party around town. A very interesting fellow named Carlos, who, by the way, has no relation to Carl, who happened to hit his head on a cheese wheel, causing strange personality issues. And he's basically a new player, uh... You know, he's going to temporarily play him until they get to the end of Coffin Rock. The end. Anyways, hopefully the next video doesn't take a whole year to make, but if you want to watch the video and it's uninterrupted, unedited podcast format, then make sure to check out my second channel, Kosal Vods, uh, name pending, which is linked in the description below. Peace, bitches.